Tijuana was better than living in 2024. Living in a 2024 where Variety puts out the most peak anti-fan, anti-nerd 2016 hate rage article that it makes you think for a moment you straight up time travel. Welcome back to Words of Paradise. I'm your host, Leon Idol. And yes, if you hadn't seen this gym that's been floating around the internet today, it is kind of a thing of beauty. It is every single buzzword you've ever heard about every single franchise that's been destroyed by those cultural vandals. It's so amazing. So we're going to get into this article before we do hit that subscribe button. I'm a nerdy news channel. I cover nerdy news every day. And let me tell you, the reason for this article is uh, chef's kiss icing on the cake. Because the reason for the article is to have some boogeyman to try and blame, even though they're acknowledging Hollywood needs to go back to what it was doing before. Toxic fandom, how Hollywood is battling fans who are just out for blood from social media boot camps to super fo super fan focus groups. It, th th this is several paragraphs of them just whinging about all the dubs we have gotten lately, about the cancellation of the Acolyte, about how the, the viewership numbers for Rings of Power are in the gutter. I, I, they don't bring up video games, but video games also, of course, fall into that. We've seen Dustborn, we've seen Concord. So many Ws from us angry chuds on the internet, the small minority that they think we are, and now the studios are being forced to listen. Which means one of two things. Either there's a lot, lot more of us anti-woke racist scripters out there. Or general modern audiences also hate this stuff. They're just not saying anything. Regardless, the end result is the same. They lose the money. On August 28th, Amanda Stenberg, the lead star of Star, uh, the lead of the Star Wars series The Acolyte, posted an eight and a half minute video to her Instagram stories about Lucasfilm's abrupt decision not to pick up the show for a second season, just a month after season one finale streamed on Disney Plus. And we all know why that is. The viewership numbers were abysmal. It's not a huge shock for me, Stenberg said. Since the series was announced in 2020, she continued, we started experiencing a rampage of, I would say, hyper-conservative bigotry and vitriol, prejudice, hatred, and hateful language towards us. Hold on, let's count the buzzwords here. This is going to be an ongoing theme throughout this video. We're going to play count the buzzwords. Um, hyper-conservative, bigotry, vitriol, prejudice, hatred, and hateful language. That is six. Six in a single sentence. You got yourselves a bingo. A bingo, bango, bongo, if you will. In other words, the Acolyte was the latest high-profile target of toxic fandom. The catch-all term for when a fan criticizes... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So, yeah, you can call it toxic man. Yeah, that is a catch-all term. We use woke also as a catch-all term. A word I hate, but it's just, don't don't pretend like we're the only ones that throw buzzwords around that are catch-all terms that don't actually have any sort of meaning to them in the modern day. The catch-all term for when a fan criticism curdles from good faith dissatisfaction into a relentlessly negative, often bigoted online campaign, either the project or its stars or creative leaders. Now, what... Who gets to decide what is a good faith dissatisfaction and what is relentlessly negative when um, a lot of the content that we've been receiving as of late is relentlessly negative combat, uh, combat content. Sorry, I'm being very combative right now. Uh, it comes with the territory, but it's gotten incredibly loud the last couple of years, says a veteran marketing executive at a major studio. No, no, no. The reason it's gotten loud these last several years is because the ideological bubble that you live in has shifted so far to the left and because you use Twitter for your marketing bases and think that uh, that's how the real world works when statistically, I, I could be wrong about this, these are old statistics, but I had read at one point, only 3% of the population of America are actually active users on X or, pre, you know, it was Twitter at the time. Only 3% of the population were active users on Twitter. So, yes, and when you've got 3% of the population, many upon many of whom have a very particular left-leaning world belief, also when the right-wingers that are on Twitter are getting canceled or banned or shadow banned and are not allowed to have their voices heard, yes, of course you marketing execs are going to look at that and think, the whole world is moving to this leftist wonderland. 
But that's not how it actually worked! People are just out for blood regardless. They think the purity of the first version will never be replaced, or you've done something to upset the canon of the beloved franchise, and they're going to take you down for doing so. But those are valid things for fans to be concerned about. They think the purity of the first version will never be replaced. Y yes, purity is the opportune word to use. Purity is the necessary term to use here because a lot of these older franchises or older movies or books or video games or whatever that may be that have become inundated with remakes and sequels and reboots they had a purity to them because we had a set of moral values people could still be republican they could still be democrat they could still have their different political ideologies but we all shared a rough collective of similar moral values. And now we live in a society where the moral values have diverged so much and only one side is in complete and utter control. And yeah, when you start making things that only cater to one side, the other side is going to feel very upset about it because it does harm what is quite literally pure about the original. Or when you do something to upset canon, canon exists for a reason. Fans get attached to whatever it is they're attached to because of the fact that they can follow a narrative, a story, characters. They can, they can see the humanity in the words that have been written because these are, at the end of the day, these are all life stories. All the greats, Indiana Jones, Star Wars, they're about the human experience more than anything else. And you should be able to relate to it regardless of what your identity is or what your politics are. But then when you go about changing canon and changing the way the story works, and you start removing the element that is the journey of man, the journey of mankind, and start making it through a propaganda-based political lens... That is going to rub people the wrong damn way. Sometimes toxic fandoms behave reactively. A House of the Dragon episode featuring two female characters kissing and an episode of The Last of Us focused on a gay couple were both review bombed. I don't know about the La House of the Dragon thing. I, I, they're talking about the first season. First season wasn't woke at all. No one complained about it. Even the uh, most ardent anti-woke people really liked season one of House of the Dragons. I heard season two fell off. I didn't end up watching it. As far as The Last of Us goes, it wasn't re review bond because, oh, it's gay. It was review bond because they took something that was never in the games, despite this supposed to be a fateful adaptation, and shoehorned it and shoved it in there purely to push propaganda agenda. You, you can have absolutely no problem with fucking gayness. And that's fine, but you can't pretend like making this entirely new story and just shoving it in where the rest of the stuff was at least attempted to be game accurate. Yeah, no, th that that's purely done because there's a message that you were trying to send and people are rejecting the message because they just wanted The Last of Us. And mind you, that character is alluded to have been gay in the game. But we never got no whole ass side project with him and, and, and his gay love story when the world's on fire. So, yeah, it, it's such obvious, obvious statements that you've heard a lot of us say over and over and over. But this article, it needs to reinforce how evil we are, how, how fascistic we are, how much we are the, the new modern day Nazis, how racist, how bigoted. And the reason it needs to do that is because of how the article ends. But we're going to keep going. I'm just, just kind of wet your whistle for a little bit. It gets better. The practice of mobbing sites like Rotten Tomatoes and IMDB with negative user reviews, which gained mainstream attention following the premiere of 2017 Star Wars The Last Jedi, an entire YouTube ecosystem is devoted to declaring projects like The Marvels and The Boys, Woke Garbage, among other pungent sobriquets. Now, The Marvels and The Boys are Woke Garbage. In fact, I was kind of a defender of The Marvels. I mean, don't get me wrong. I didn't like it. It wasn't good. Not by any stretch of the imagination. I didn't pay for it. I pirated it. Um... But it was actually lower on the wokeness scale than I thought it would be. I, I dare I say, Thor: Love and Thunder was far, and the first Captain Marvel were far more woke than the Marvels. So there is that. And then the Boys, yeah, the, the Boys is my favorite comic book series of all time. And uh, needless to say, what they have done to the show, completely diverging from the post 9/11 scare, you know, uh, uh, ideologies that are presented in those comics. Is, it is insane. It is not the books I grew up reading. And as a massive fan of the boys, it is haunting. 
Just as frequently, the backlash begins before the project is seen the light of day. A Reddit mega thread dedicated to outrage over Bridgerton casting. Okay, I don't give a shit about Bridgerton. I'm straight, believe it or not. The Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, death threats amid Leslie Jones, uh, aimed at Leslie Jones during the press tour for 2016 Ghostbusters. Le the 2016 Ghostbusters. You know what? There's entire video essays on YouTube about the history of that dumpster fire. There's nothing I can add to it at this point. You guys already, if you've been in this anti-woke game long enough like I have, because I've been doing this since about 2012, give or take, 2014 at the latest, then, then if you know, you know. Perhaps the greatest irony is the phenomenon is the disproportionate impact these toxic fandoms have relative to their actual number. And here's the great part. They're going to try and say... There aren't that many of us, but if there aren't that many of us, then why are these projects flopping? Why are they not making money? The vast majority of fandom are casual fans, said John Van S uh, Kidders, Siders, whatever, VP of Star Trek brand development, who has been with the story franchise since the 1990s. Oh, right, you've been with the, the story franchise for some of the good years, and then honestly, when it was considered on the downswing, and now Star Trek is a laughing stock. Star Trek is up there with Star Wars and Doctor Who as the biggest laughing stocks in all of sci-fi and sci-fantasy entertainment that was once loved by a global audience that is now being rejected by a global audience. Have you seen the viewership numbers for these shows? They are, a, which is why when Picard season three came out and it was just less woke and written by an actual fan who had to fight to get in the door. People loved it and celebrated it. The number of people who live or die on their franchises are very, very few. Well, they used to be. Yeah, you know what? Then those who come after uh, come after things they espouse to love with Venom are really, really tiny subset of the already smaller subset of Phantom. It's just much easier to see it now. I don't know that it really that much broader than there than things were in 1995. It's just the bullhorn wasn't there. I reject this. I reject this notion. He is incredibly incorrect. Things were different back then. Not only. Like he said, we didn't have the internet, or at least the internet wasn't ubiquitous, so of course, you know, the bullhorn wasn't there. He is correct about that part. However, the idea that these fans are a, a tiny amount is completely antithetical and untrue because we didn't have the ease of access to all forms of media like we do now. Now we can turn on the Roku or your Chromecast or your Smart TV or your Switch or your PS5, whatever it may be, and you've got the world of entertainment at your fingertips. You can watch anything and everything, legally, illegally, it doesn't matter. You, we, we have all the content we could possibly need, want, we are drowning in it. So because of the ease of access, there are more and more fans who are watching this and seeing what has been destroyed that used to, there was no opportunity for the destruction. If it wasn't good, it got canceled, you didn't make money, you moved on. I mean, it, it really was like the, the model for TV versus the model for streaming are so wildly different. So when you say the number of people who live and die on the franchises are very few, no, you, you, you could not be further from the truth. There are more fans now than ever because of the ease of access. Do you know how many people had never seen the X-Files and I showed them the X-Files and they have fallen in love with it? I watched the X-Files growing up. It's one of my favorite shows of all time. I love showing people the X-Files. There are objectively more X-Files fans now than then because I have shown multiple more people the X-Files and turn them into fans. For some, combating the bullhorn, look, look, that's, the point is, we're gonna skip to the end here, because I've already been ranting for a hot moment, and this is still going on. They do not know when to shut the hell up. Uh, they talk about how, later that year, uh, let's see, let's find it here. Um, did, did, did I miss it? Let's see. Oh, here, here it is, all right. Uh, Amazon MGM Studios TV chief Vernon Sanders about the Rings of Power, the executive said the show hadn't experienced the same racist hostility in advance of season two that agreed its 2022 debut. Yeah, because no one's watching it. More people watch season one than season two. Well, at least more people watched the first two episodes of season one than any of season two. And they checked out. Why bitch and moan about, you know, how awful the show is when you can just not watch it because we already found out from the first two episodes of season one how bad it was. People have had a chance to actually engage with the show he said, overwhelmingly, what we've seen is that folks who come in with an open mind can discuss uh, out of place, can, uh, can discuss their favorite things, which takes you out of the place. The ugly conversation that happened with some of the folks who may have been infused with an agenda that's separate from the show itself. The irony of them saying that we have, first of all, we do have an agenda. 
The agenda is not to make content right-wing, it's just to get your absurd, communistic, left-leaning ideologies out of what we love. It is that simple. I, I, I can't, I cannot imagine the burying their head in the sand that these studios are willing to do just, to, just because they don't like the way we talk on the internet. They're very vocal, says the studio exec. They will just tell us if you do that, fans are going to retaliate. These groups have even led studios to alter the projects. If it's early enough and the movie isn't finished yet, we can make those kinds of changes. Now, I can think of uh, the Sonic the Hedgehog fan base being very vocal about Ugly Sonic when that trailer debuted, and then we showed up to support the movie in droves when it finished. Sonic 1 made a killing. Sonic 2, even more so. Sonic 3 comes out in about two months, and it is poised to be a box box office smash. I mean, basically what's going down here is the studios are assembling a specialized cluster of super fans to assess possible marketing materials for major franchise products. Now, the reason they're doing this is they're losing money. It boils down to that. It's that simple. They have lost so much money. They're now putting together focus groups. They're now putting together super fan focus groups to watch or these events or, or read the scripts or whatever it is in advance and get the super fan feedback because they realize they have no choice but to actually listen to the fans if you want your project to be successful. When the live action One Piece came out and it was amazing, after I had doubted it for very obvious reasons because live action anime never works, I had been a One Piece live action hater up until the day of release, and it came out, and oh my god, it was amazing, and I told everyone about it, and I know all the other One Piece fans told all their friends about it, my father, who's never watched an episode of anime in his life, watched the live action One Piece of his own volition, I hadn't even told him about it, he called me to tell me I should check this show out, I laughed, I've been watching One Piece since 2003, I've been reading it since 2002 or something, like, the, the, the point is, the show had legs because everyone talked about it. We were vocal. There was word of mouth. The same thing happened with Fallout. When you make something that adheres to the source material, when you leave your identity politics out of it, you will get results. You will make money. You hate that. Variety hates that, though, because what regular, normal-ass people have wised up to this. But those are just my opinions. Let me know yours in the comments down below. Or let me know on X, or you can find me at Bolt the Word. And please do subscribe. I am a nerdy news channel. I cover nerdy news every day. Um, Usually news of, of people calling folks like us bigots and racists, but not always. You know, a lot of stuff about anime, movies, music, Magic the Gathering, you name it. Check me out on Instagram at Words of Paradise underscore Leon. And become a member for $4.99 a month. You can join the Discord. Choose the articles I go over on a day-to-day -day basis. Choose the videos I react to on my Friday night live streams. And of course, get involved with over 80 other vital idols. We are a bright, beautiful, glowing, vibrant community that I cannot wait to grow even further because we do care about diversity. Only one kind of diversity. Diversity of thought. If that's interesting to you, join the Discord, hit subscribe, and until next time, it is all here in the Nerdosphere. This has been Words of Paradise.